Hey folks and uh, welcome to this uh, live stream about chilli peppers and everything chilies. We've got a really good guest today which is Sean from a Chilli Chump. Now Sean he's dedicated his entire channel to growing chilies and making hot sauces and all other sorts of stuff and he's even uh, gone down all the technical side of things with chilies he really does nail it so we've got him on today now before we get Sean on just a little bit of housekeeping um, at the top of the chat box there's where you've got the live chat and the top chat if you select that it has a question and answers chat as well but only put the questions that you want me or Sean to answer in there there's there's not a place for chatting come back to the live chat for that okay and that'll just make it easier for us to pull those questions out so uh, without any further ado I'm going to bring Sean in and um, and we're going to get him uh, into the thing and for some reason that isn't working now hey sean how are you doing i'm very well yourself my friend i'm good mate sean for those who um haven't got a clue who you are why don't you introduce yourself and uh and then we'll go from there yeah, i'm sean also known as chili chump and like tony was saying uh yeah i'm completely uh passionate about chilies and everything to do with it i have quite a techie background so a lot of what i do in my growing channel is uh Doing things in a bit of a geeky way and yeah i share a lot of that stuff as well on my channel but yeah chilies growing them making hot sauce uh, eating them it's all good to me oh brilliant okay so folks like i said if you've got any questions for me or sean put them in that for some reason my stream deck has just to, decided to pack in and not work so i'm gonna have to flick through um before we continue there tony uh, just anyone in the chat i am watching the chat as well but if anyone's in the chat can you um, can you just let me know if you can hear any feedback from Tony's side? Because I'm not wearing earphones. I'm happy to put them on, but I'd rather not for an hour and a half. Um, I have bumped up my audio. Uh, yours is a little bit distorted, Tony. Um, is it? Right. Is anybody else getting distorted audio from me? <clears throat> Seems to be okay at the moment, Sean. So we'll just carry on as we go unless people will tell us. Um, so, um, Sean, um, so let's start off then. Um, what are you, uh, planning for this year? <laughs> That's a big question. I'm going to, I'm going to stick on the earphones because there's a people, few people saying there's a bit of an okay. echo, so. My audio's <sighs> clipping. Let's turn that down a touch then. Yeah, you, you need to How is that now, guys? Is that better? How's that? There we go. Hopefully that's a yeah. bit better. If I turn mine up any higher, it will clip on my side. Yeah, yours seems to be okay so. this side. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, plans for the year. Um, more of the same and a lot of new stuff as well, of course. So it's almost time for me to start my chilies. I will be doing things a little different this year. So if people do follow my channel, they'll see that... Um, I normally start because I'm very impatient, like most people are. I'm very impatient, and I want to get started straight away. So normally, first of Jan, I'm out there getting seeds started inside my grow shed under lights, things like that. But I'm going to hold off because that's always a mistake, especially in the UK. Uh, we can only get our seeds or our seedlings out in probably April time. Uh, where I live, it's probably the second week of April where it's safe. I have got a heater to keep the frost away, so I can go a little bit earlier than that, but... The problem is if you start seeds too early, then you're going to have some problems. Well, I'm sure we'll get onto that in the in the live stream anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I'll be starting a bit later. Uh, I'll be starting a few super hots that I'm doing some interesting things with. Uh, I'll be starting that probably the first or second week of Jan. And then probably early Feb, I'll start the majority of the rest of my seedlings. Uh, beyond that, uh, there's some very cool stuff coming. I'm sure we're going to be talking about it a bit later. Seeds.io, the application that I built to help you manage your plants and not just chilies, but all plants. Uh, there's some very cool stuff coming down the line for that, that I'm going to integrate. Uh, again, I did talk about that a little bit in my last video that I closed off the season with. So that, that's going to take up quite a bit of time. I'm excited about that. I want to get that up and running. Yeah. Um, and other than that, yeah, just I've got a ton of great ideas. Uh, Tony, you and I, chat quite a bit about this but a ton of great ideas for some very cool videos coming in the new year 
Um, I want to finish off my reboot of my From Seed to Source series as well. I got halfway through that last year, and I'll finish off the second half of that this coming year with a few episodes like how to deal with pests that you have to commonly deal with uh, in terms of your chilies. And, uh, you know, going through right to, you know, making hot sauce, giving you some basics there as well. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, cool. so that's a bit of it. <laughs> so for those who don't know Sean, he moved last, was it last year or the end of the year before? Oh, it's the year before, man. Yeah. Times it flies by, this whole COVID situation. It's just going so fast, isn't it? But um, he's got some so last awesome year was the... green houses now. That's all like, yeah. really brilliant. Yes, yeah, so we got those up. I, we moved the year before last. Uh, we're still in 2022 so yeah it was last year we moved in around march time uh, we got busy very quickly building up uh, some greenhouses so i have two greenhouses one's 10 by 20 foot and then the other one is 20 by 30 foot and it's just awesome but it is true though <laughs> no matter how big your greenhouse is you still want bigger uh, yeah. straight away I'm, I'm wishing i had something bigger but I'm, I'm more than happy with it. It's I'm the same with job. the tunnels. I got two 36 foot tunnels by 14 feet, and <laughs> I'm still like, right, where can I fit a bigger one in? <laughs> oh, it's well, I'm, I'm I'm starting to look. I was starting to browse for tunnels, but no, no I'm I'm gonna hold back. I, I I don't need to do that. I'll actually be reducing the number number of plants that I grow this year because, of course. I don't just do the channel and growing chilies and showing folks how to do it and uh, you know make content like I do, but I also run a hot sauce business. So I use the chilies that I grow. I make a variety of hot sauces, whether it's super hot stuff or uh, some of the milder stuff that you could use every day. Mm. The thing is I need chilies to do that. Um, so I'll be reducing the number of plants that I grow this year. And, and this is again, something we've spoken about from a general plant perspective, you know, you need to give them space to, branch out to grow and create a harvest and i think even by reducing the number of plants i'll get probably a bigger harvest next year so it's all lessons learned so it's a new growing space first time i've used it properly this full year that will also help with the airflow and stuff for you as well when it will reduce well, the it. pests and everything so we've got a couple of questions come in and um the first one has come from lisa um oh, i don't know why that's gone all the way up there either um so why do chilies need to be warm why do they need to be warm? Warm, yeah. Warm. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm guessing from the perspective of growing them, uh, starting them. Uh, if you if you're asking about why they need to be warm in terms of the spicy level, that's a whole different story. But yeah, from starting them and growing them, they need a warmer climate because that's where they come from. Uh, in general, they they're going to come from the more tropical climates. Uh, they're not native to the UK which is why it is quite a challenge to grow them outdoors. You can grow them outdoors, but uh, you know, I keep I, I experiment with it every single year. I try something new, try put them out in the ground a bit later, but you're never going to get the results you get from putting them inside a greenhouse or polytunnel undercover, just controlling the temperatures a little bit. But yeah, just, it's just the climate they come from, right? Right. Okay. Um, so the next one comes from Michael Lindsay, and uh, what's the best feed to feed chilies from start to finish? Uh, <laughs> that's that's quite a big question. Yeah, I mean, you can keep it simple. You can go complicated, right? I, I like to overcomplicate things a little bit sometimes. Um, obviously, what I do, I'm um, I'm very much nailed into or, or narrowed into exactly what I'm trying to do with chilies. I actually feed different varieties in different ways, depending on what I'm trying to go for. But if you want a general feed that's going to do the job uh, from the cheaper end of the spectrum, tomato feed. There's nothing wrong with that. It'll do the job. It's got pretty much similar nutrient levels that chilies need. And yeah, you'll do just fine. The one thing there is use half the dilution that's recommended for tomatoes and feed half as often, right? right. To, you, you can overfeed chilies too easily. What that's going to do is going to increase the amount of pests you get. You're going to get a lot more aphids. Um, and also you could cause some leaf burn or, or just you know, some nitrogen burn, that sort of thing sometimes. So yeah, less is more when it comes to chilies. If you want to step it up just a little bit more without getting overcomplicated and building out your own nutrients, then chili focus is a great one. Uh, that's also, I would recommend half dilution for that, even though it is focused on chilies, uh, still half dilution. And funnily enough, chili focus has actually come down in price where it's, it's almost as cheap as buying tomato feed these days. Um, Amazon has it for pretty much the same price. Five liters of chili focus is about the same price as five liters of a decent tomato feed. Right, okay. Cool. 
So the next one we have is from Eric Knight. What's your favourite pepper for looks and flavour? Ah, well, again, anybody that's watched my channel knows I absolutely love peri peris. Um, so peri peri chilies is that's my absolute favourite. I love the look of them, and obviously they remind me of Africa, where I come from. But in terms of last year, in terms of looks, I would say the sugar rush stripey was amazing. The variety that I managed to cultivate and get seeds from, because again, I, I sell seeds and my favorite varieties, I will sell seeds for those. Um, and I was quite selective with them. But the, the sugar rush stripey, it looks like little pieces of candy. It's It, it kind of blew me away. I, I knew what to expect when I was growing them, but actually seeing them in person and growing them and, and getting them to start mature and seeing those little red stripes with the yellow, it was just stunning. Um, and that actually tastes pretty decent as well if you like that sort of flavor profile. It's not my favorite flavor profile, those types of chilies, Bacatons. I think it's a Bacatum. Um, but yeah, it, it's still, it's fantastic one. I'll be growing it again next year, of course, because it just looks stunning. In terms of flavor, from the milder end, you know, peri peris, which are actually pretty spicy. They're, they're decent. Um, some of, no, well, jalapeno, you can't go wrong. I mean, the classics, there's a reason it's a classic because it, it tastes delicious. KN as well is another decent one. But uh, from the more exotic side, yeah, if you're going for the sugar rush stripey, that'll be a stunner. Everyone's going to be pretty amazed when they see that thing come out. Okay, cool. So while we're on the subject then, um, you've got a seed website. So, um, Talk us a little bit through this. The seed site. Yeah. Um, just give me one sec because I can't actually see what you're showing. Um, so I'm showing um, the, the the video that video I sent you for seed seed So before. seed yo, I've been I've been monitoring and tracking and automating what I do in my greenhouses for a long time. So even in the property I had before, I had a eight by sixteen greenhouse as well as a small polytunnel and. There's a lot of plants that I grow. I am a busy guy. I don't have time to spend uh, just daily spending three, four hours watering the plants at the peak of the season. So I automate all of that. Now you can get off the shelf stuff, but I'm a geek. I am a programmer as well, and I develop my own systems. And CDO is basically an evolution of what I developed originally, but I took it a step further. So CDO came about, Seeds IO. It came about because I wanted to create facebook for gardens uh, for gardeners right and and that's pretty much what it is it's amazing to see people actually using it and uh, getting involved with it but basically any plant any variety any genus you want to go and put in there you can um the majority of people that follow me that are on cd obviously are chili growers so there's a, there's quite a an extensive um catalog of chilies that are in there but you can add anything you want. There's a lot of tomato grows in there. There's actually a lot of uh, people that are growing uh, bonch, uh, bonsais and um, they're tracking their, their progress on that. So essentially you can go in there. Uh, I use NFC tags. I wish I had one here, but basically it's a little tag that you can stick on your plant and put a number on it. You can yeah, tap we, it with your phone. We saw that it, in the video. Yeah. And you can see it pops up on your phone and it's nice and easy to keep track of your plants, reuse it year on year. But it doesn't have to be that complex. I know that might seem a bit much to go and program little tags and things like that. Uh, so you can actually, if you want, use a QR code or just write the number on a tag and type it into your phone, number one. It'll bring up that plant. You can then go and take a photo of it, see the progress of it. Uh, you can also see things like if, if somebody else is growing, let's say it's a jalapeno and, and somebody else is growing that exact variety, you can click on, you know, there's three other growers that are growing it. Click on it and it'll show you their progress. It'll tell you whereabouts they live. You can see a map. You can see their weather and that sort of thing. And you can compare the progress of your plants with them. So not only from a chili perspective is that useful, but any sort of growing. If you are passionate about growing, uh, and I know it can't just be in the chili community, but we we treat our plants like babies. And you know we want to want to see how they're progressing. We want to see how they are getting on. We want to see how they compare to what other people are doing. And this app helps you do that. You can comment on other people's progress. All those photos and that, uh, they're all there to track over the season so you can see how your plant has progressed. You can make notes about things like if there's been some aphid damage and how that's affected the plant. You know, maybe you have five jalapeno plants and one of them happens to not be producing as many jalapenos at the end of the season. If you go back and look in your app, you can see, well, actually that plant had a lot of aphid damage in the early part of the season. Maybe next year, next time I see that sort of aphid damage, maybe I'll remove that plant and you know continue without it because it's not worth it. So it allows you to really have an informed 
sort of view of what you're doing in the garden. Plus, it's pretty cool just to be able to keep track of your plants like that. At least I do. I, I know it's not for everyone, but it's something I enjoy using and something I've enjoyed building. And I think it's easy enough for people to use that it is useful for people that aren't geeky like myself. Yeah. But one thing, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm waffling on, but this is a passion project of mine. It's something I absolutely love and uh, spend a lot of time building. But the the next step of this, what I'm developing over time, the whole year, this last year, I've actually got the other element of Seeds IO. So the IO part is input output, right? The input part is sticking your photos in there and tracking your temperatures and things like that. Well, I'm building that in. So the IoT aspect of this is the ability for you to track your temperatures of your greenhouses, your humidity levels, that sort of thing, and also control things like pumps and lights and fans, which is what I do at the moment. So I built the platform out. I'm using it for myself. I've got a few beta testers uh, from some of my followers that are helping out there. And it's worked out really well. And it's time now to integrate that with CDO. So you'll be able to start using that for yourself. And that side of it, that's exciting. That, that's that's going to be cool. And again, you don't have to use that part of it if you don't want to. If you just want to keep track of your plants and uh, you know use the basic functionality of Seedia, that's perfectly fine as well. But if you happen to want to you know track some you know some information like your temperature and humidity, or, or even just look at what other people's temperature and humidity is like, or you know how often are they watering? Being able to see that. How often are they fertilizing? You'll be able to see all that information because it'll all be automated and inside the platform. So it's something I'm really excited about. And we'll see how that goes, um, what the uptake is of it. But regardless of whether there's one other person that loves it, a thousand people that love it, or none, I'm still going to be using it because it makes my life infinitely easier to use a platform like that. Yeah, yeah. And like I, when I got on there and played around with it, it's... Um... There is a slight little learning curve to it. It's not a lot. It's very easy. If you can get around Facebook, you can get around this sort of thing. And um, But what I like about it is that if you are having some bad results or something like that, because you've tracked over a period of time, you can go back and go, well, that was different and it must be down to that. Or, you know, especially if you've used the same seed or something like that, you know, it allows you to problem solve and things like that. And that's what I really like about it. And um, and then that leads us on then to your um, the, the seed website, um, yep. Chili Chump Seeds. So, yeah, that's something I started this year. Um, and I don't want to get into too many of the politics, unfortunately. And, and I'm sure this is in other areas of gardening as well, especially when you have tons of different varieties. I think tomatoes probably is another one that's in a similar position as us. There's a lot of, a lot of seed vendors out there that aren't the most scrupulous. <laughs> And unfortunately, especially for new growers, you know, I, I want people to love chilies as much as I do, and I want them to enjoy the hobby as much as I do. So when they go and they spend money on some really awesome sounding chilies and they, you know, they get these seeds and they grow them and nurture them for the next eight, nine months. And at the end of the season, what they thought was a Carolina Reaper, for example, and ends up being a habanero or a jalapeno, it's hugely disappointing, right? And it happens all too often. I've seen people give up the hobby because of that. They have one bad year and it's like, oh, bugger, you know, I've, I've just, I have invested so much time and effort into this and this is what I get now I'm done. So I decided I wanted to start a seed site. I don't have the biggest variety out there. I don't have um, huge amounts of stock because I only sell the quality seeds uh, that I that I test the germination of. But I did. I started that earlier this year, and uh, there's a few interesting varieties there, including some of my own hybrids. And yeah, it's 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 been quite successful, more successful than I thought. Um, it's not a it's it's not something I'm making pro big profits out of. It's enough to you know keep the that part of the business going. But it gives people the opportunity to, to buy some quality seeds and some interesting varieties, right? So that's why I started that. And, yeah, if you want to go check it out, it's chilichumpseeds.com. Um, that's with two L's. Unlike, unlike the name of this live, live stream, which is one L. What's, what's with the one L, Tony? <laughs> that's what happens when you use AI to write something for you and don't double check it. But <laughs> in fairness... <laughs> there's a lot of people from the states here so i know, I know. Yeah. so so in that was one of my more contentious videos that i put out last year it was yeah. uh, 10 facts about chilies and the first thing i brought up was just the double it's spelled different. different throughout the world and <laughs> hey 
As long as you're growing them and loving them, I don't care how you spell it. Hey, we um, had a double L in your name, so. <laughs> 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 Folks, um, just to let you know as well, all the links for the app, the Seeds um, uh, website and Sean's website and Sean's channel are all in the description below for you so that you can get yourself across there and subscribe and, and purchase seeds and things like that if you're looking uh, for those sorts of seeds. So we've got um, a couple more questions coming through so this one from lisa again is um second question can she use her gr new grow lights for chilies or should uh she do it a regular way she's been i believe putting them on the windowsill before but um she was given some new grow lights for christmas so yeah it, it's it's a tough one that's one of the reasons i'm growing a little bit later in the season just any time that i don't have to have all my grow lights on and my heating on to keep those little seedlings happy is money saved right cost me about five to ten, well it was five pound a day last year so this year is probably you know in the uk we've got this energy crisis going on um our More energy like 20 <laughs> oh, yeah i'll be lucky if we can get it under 15 so i'm i'm holding off so that is the downside of using grow lights however you'll see especially if they're decent grow lights and and, and honestly most led grow lights these days are fairly decent even the cheapy ones right you know it's, it's going to make such a difference especially if in the uk south facing windowsill i've got one i even with that south facing windowsill i get if i'm lucky about five hours of direct sunlight in in the winter time and it's not really direct sunlight it's so low and it's not coming in you know it's not coming in heavy so yeah grow lights are definitely going to make a difference i like the in the window <laughs> it, it for, makes for such that a block difference. because really even does. though that's south facing i just don't have enough light coming through there for in, for the duration of the plants you know that yeah. i need so it's it's tough listen you'd have to spend a lot of money to get uh, on on the on the actual power consumption as well as the types of lights you use if you want to grow chilies throughout the season indoors right you're going to need a ton of light yeah. but the good news is you don't need to spend a lot of money to get decent lights in the beginning part of the season it's as simple as getting cfls you know the little helix sort of yeah. lights get cfls daylight bulbs 6500k or 6500 kelvin Get those plugged in with a little, you can make a homemade little reflector with some tin foil or, you know, some mylar if you want and have that over your plant. They'll love that. The seedlings do not need a lot of light. I have a very comprehensive lighting video on my, my channel, part of my Seed to Source series, uh, where I talk through that and I talk through just, you know, how little light it needs at the beginning of the season. But it does ramp up as your plants get to, you know, like, probably after your first potting up, then they're going to start being a bit more light hungry. But you can get away with those CFLs, uh, T5 lights, those T5 strip lights, those are fine. But the most efficient are going to be LEDs. There is a little investment up front, but it is worth it because you're going to get a lot more uh, time out of them as well. So most LEDs are like, what, 50,000 hours yeah. of light, whereas CFLs, T5s, 1,000 hours maybe, and the half-life of that goes down. You're going to have to replace them every couple of years. So, okay, cool. yeah, it's definitely going to make a difference, though, from just having the, the windowsill light. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, Alan Target is asking you if you have a beginner's guide to chilies. Yeah, go on. A book? Not a book. I'm actually, <laughs> I have a book, and that's part of my beginner's guide series. Um, it's, it's almost done. I want to complete the book once I finish this reboot of my series. So it was about three years ago I started a series called From Seed to Source, which is basically taking you from growing chilies from the seed phase right through to all the problems you might face, how to feed them, what sort of soil mix you should use. I've got my, my secret soil recipe in there. And then all the way through to actually making a hot sauce using fermentation. That's my favorite method of doing it. It's going to give you the best results, best tasting sauce, and also probably the safest sauce out there. So the series covered that. It was very popular, but it was at a time when I was just starting out. I uh, didn't know a ton about, you know, the videography side of things, audio, getting all that right, uh, presenting to camera. So 
I really wanted to redo that. And I did. I started that last year. I mean, it's a learning process. You, You're learning you've been helping me out with these live streams. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you something, guys. Right, I've been here for the last two weeks trying to get this system set up. And it was all working well this morning. <laughs> and I've gone live and everything's just going wrong. The stream deck's not working. And it's typical. And it? it's just, just the way it's, it is. And you it just happens. have to work around it. So yeah. we... We've got another question from Simone. We've already answered this, Simone. Uh, yes, Sean does have a website that sells seeds and the link is down in the description below for you. Yeah, so, and I would really recommend that. So the one the one seed, I need to check my stock, but it's such a popular seed variety, is my CC Peri Peri, which is my Chili Chum Peri Peri. It's one I've been cultivating for many, many years. It is a beautiful culture. It grows so well in the UK. Um, obviously much better if you're growing it under you know in a greenhouse or polytunnel but it is my favorite chili by far problem is it's just gone out of stock uh, i've been away uh just visiting the in-laws and i saw that it went out of stock in my in my shop i need to check my stock to see if it's going to go back in so there is an alternative there at the moment the moz peri peri this is a peri peri seed that i brought back from mozambique a little while back and i've been cultivating that year on year it's a different variety a little bit less heat but a bit more sweetness a bit bigger uh, but if you want the CC Peri Peri, I will be putting them back in stock very soon. So just keep an eye out on that probably in the next couple of days. So Pam Clark um, has asked, she's recently bought Sugar Rush Stripey. Do they store well? Uh, all seeds, well, Sugar Rush Stripey seeds, I'm guessing. Uh, all seeds will store well as long as they were prepared well. Uh, if they were dried correctly down to the right humidity level, which is generally around uh, 20%, 20, 30 percent will keep them viable for a long time. Uh, you you can keep them in the fridge. That's the best way. If you're very confident in the seed seller that you purchase from, like if you're buying my seeds, then there's absolutely no problem in freezing them. They won't damage them because of the humidity level that I bring those down to. If you aren't too sure about the quality of the seed vendor you're using, do not put them in the freezer because you will damage those seeds and they will not germinate. But stick them in the fridge, that should be just fine. They'll go dormant. Uh, then you'll need to obviously just, just if you follow some of the videos, it's pretty basic stuff around starting seeds. I have that in the seed to source series. It'll show you how to get them to germinate. Six years is is no time at all for these seeds, right? Store them incorrectly, and yeah, one or two years, and you're gonna have a problem. But yeah, six years or so, you'll be you'll be perfectly fine. Just just store them correctly. Don't let them get exposed to any moisture, things like that. Okay, cool. Stuart Perkins asking for a complete novice growing chili plants. What type would you recommend? The ones that you enjoy eating the most. Um, but before I go on to that, sorry, just, just one sec. So Pam's just said in the comments there, she's talking about uh, the fruits. The fruits also will keep, you can freeze them. I mean, it's the same as pretty much most chilies. They'll keep very well. Depends on what you want. If you just want the flavor from them, then yeah, you can freeze them. They might go mushy when you cook with them or make a sauce with them. Uh, but if that's not a problem to you, if you don't want them crunchy, then that's fine. If you do want them uh, crunchy, then you're going to have to use them fresh. You can dry them as well and use a powder from them if you want. Um, but if yeah, if you want to make a sauce out of them or use them sort of in a, in a meal, then I would freeze them probably and use them direct like that. Um, in terms of, yeah, the best one to, to grow, if, if you aren't too sure, if you're pretty new to chilies, chilies, I got obsessed with them. Yes, I do love eating chilies. I love the spice. I love the, the challenge it gives you, especially some of the super hots. But... You know, they're such beautiful plants. And, you know, there's five core species in the capsicum genus, which most people know about and grow. And, you know, those five, try and get one from each of those and you'll see the difference in those plants. Um, you know, the little purple flowers that come out of them. People are surprised sometimes that there's such a different variety. Uh, little white flowers, big flowers, small flowers. It, it's stunning. Different amount of petals, different leaf size, uh, different plant size, and obviously the chilies as well they're, they're all different too and um, there's just such lovely varieties but yeah if you're just starting out and you just want to see if this is for you then make sure that you at least have chilies like jalapeno if, if you have jalapeno that you grow yourself compare that to something you buy in the supermarket it's going to be completely different like most vegetables and fruit but yeah make sure you grow something that you're actually going to use you know if, if you've never had a super hot before don't go straight out and get a seven pot habanero or seven pot primo or prima tali because Yes, they're awesome to grow and it's a great challenge. But like many of my followers and viewers, they're sitting there saying, okay, now what do I do with all of these? <laughs> they're too hot. I, um, um, so, all the yeah. ones I grew, I used to put in a bowl on the fire stations as I, when I travel around <laughs> the fire stations. 
and you'd see people, oh yeah, I could eat hot ones, and they'd be, you know, reapers and things like that in there, and they'd be taking them out. They, you know, they'd just be munching them, thinking they just like a jalapeno or something. Like, <laughs> and you could see them minutes later on the floor. I guess <laughs> brilliant, but you got to be careful with that as well. So I don't don't recommend it. But uh, yeah, listen, I love the challenge, and and to me, it's still it's still scary. You know, I I do them on my live streams now and then. I'll eat something stupid. <laughs> I, I enjoy I, it. I look at you on your live streams, and then I look at me when I tried your um, weapons grade weapons hot grade. sauce. Uh, we'll we'll have a video of that later on, guys. Um, <laughs> but um, so while we're on sauces, Sean, um, you do a lot of videos based around sauces, and yeah. uh, a lot of recipes for hot sauce, and you find well, hot some sauce quite... and pickles, and and just just generally spicy stuff, right? There's yeah. gonna be a lot more. That's one of the big changes that's going to happen actually coming up is. There's going to be a lot more cooking videos as well. Obviously, the sauce videos are continue. There's some really cool ones coming out. But, yeah, the cooking stuff as well. Anything spicy. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's stuff that's in my recipe book as well. What I liked about them was the fact that um, you find quite unique ways of doing them, like with vacuum packing, you know, them to ferment or, yeah. you know, you got your ferminator there and stuff like <laughs> that. So, you know, it's, it's things like that, I think, that people here will find really interesting when they come to your hey, channel. You should go have a look. So... It's, it's a tough one. I mean, I have this conversation with some of the viewers, especially people that have been following me for a long time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys, uh, like many of us are, that just wants to constantly improve, right? I can't stick with status quo. I can't stick with the same thing I've been doing day in and day out. That just doesn't work for me because I will get bored very quickly and I want to keep on expanding and getting better. And one of those is obviously, you know, I never set out to start a sauce business. That kind of just happened off the back of me sharing recipes. I've been cooking for well, my entire life, uh, making hot sauces. I've been doing that for the last uh, decade and a half, almost two decades. And, you know, I've come up with some interesting things. But I keep on expanding on that. And I'm at a point now, I obviously do this commercially. Um, I have some of my hot sauces sitting behind me over there. And I, and I sell these from my, my website, chillychump.com. Um, and part of that means that I have to scale up, right? I'm selling a lot of hot sauce. So, you know, the things like the Ferminator, I still use that. It's a, basically a modified fridge. It's an, it's an old fridge I got for like 10 bucks on Facebook. Somebody was, they obviously had redone their kitchen and just getting rid of an old fridge. You'd be amazed how many perfectly working fridges are out there for 10 bucks as long as you're willing to go collect them. Um, I got that and I basically just modified it a bit so that I can maintain the temperatures I need for fermentation, which is you know, roughly around 20 degrees Celsius, depending on the fermentation I'm doing. Um, so I still use those sort of things, but obviously I need to expand and it's, it's difficult. You know, I think you know how this is, Tony, as well. You know, you can't share some of the bigger projects maybe that you're doing because just right. people wouldn't really understand, you know, it's like, wait, wait, that's just so out of reach of what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make myself half a liter of hot sauce here. So yeah, you're not, yeah. once you go into those things and they become part of your videos, you're not relatable anymore. Exactly. But you know, and I will, I'll share some of that stuff now and then, but it's going to be the, it's like 0.1% of my viewers are going to be interested in that. The rest of the time I'm, I'm still doing experiments. I do small batch experiments all the time. I'm always experimenting with flavors, uh, long-term fermentation, short-term fermentation, uh, smoking things. And you know, there's a lot of things that I'm busy doing and I'll keep on sharing that stuff. So yeah, go check out the channel. Um, the one thing I did is I was, one, one of the most popular videos on my channel was uh, when I was replicating what Tabasco do, right? So Tabasco sauce is a fermented hot sauce. They called it aged because fermented somehow is a negative connotation to, you know, some, some people have a negative sort of view of what fermentation means. So they call it aged. And all that is, is just fermented, but they ferment for about three years. And then it's the whole process that goes along. I tried to replicate that, which meant that I came up with the Ferminator at the time. Um, also came up with the stir plate. So using a stir bar to agitate the chilies and mix that in with the, the vinegar and stuff like that. I love coming up with those ideas. It's great. It replicates the entire process step by step, obviously in a very different way. And it gives you a great result at the end. And it's all very affordable and, you know, it's accessible. So, yeah, I'll, I'll continue doing those sort of things and go check it out. I have about 40... 40 or 50 hot sauce videos now, I think, yeah. recipes that I share and things like that. So. And uh, guys, Sean's always doing stuff on his live streams with, um, you know, enabling people to test out the hot sauces and he's giving like, um, you know, he'll put specific batches for sale that of something he's just 
uh, done. Um, one of the things that happened uh, a couple, uh, probably a couple of months ago now was you gave away a bottle of your uh, hot sauce, which was the weapons grade hot sauce. And I so it's one of my most popular it. videos, and, and you happened to get it. I, I mean, happened to comment. That was not it organized. I'm friends with you, but that's not how it happened. It <laughs> no, was it wasn't. Random. I only commented it just to support it. <laughs> Never for once <laughs> thought I'd win it. And uh, a few days later, this bottle of hot sauce turns up. So I've got a little video clip that I've sent Sean. I've edited it down a little bit so you don't see the full thing because it's quite long. Um, so I've cut this down to a couple of minutes just so you can see what it's like. Um, uh, but I'm a weed when it comes to heat. So here I we go. I well. received this weapons grade chili sauce. I haven't even opened it up the bag yet from Sean. And I've got to say, pal, <laughs> your packaging is amazing. It took me ages to get into it. And I was even using a knife. So um, for those of you that don't know, I am a right pussy when it comes to uh anything hot you know uh even like a habanero or something like that is really poor for me so um i'm actually do as sean has asked because i won this fair and square and i think it's only fair that i taste it and cry now i am prepared i've got some milk <laughs> and I've got a tea towel to cry into, but um, I've got quite a large teaspoon. I am not doing the whole teaspoon, I can tell you. Wow. Right, okay. I'm shaking. <laughs> I hate heat. But I said I will do it. Wow. Look at that. Oh, my God. Right, I tell you what, before I take that, let's put the lid back on it before I start crying like a baby. Because I am not like Sean, who can just do this, but here we go. So, I don't know, we'll say half a teaspoon or something, but we'll soon see how much I'm crying now in a minute. What? <sighs> Wow. God, that takes your breath away. <clears throat> That's hot, Sean. Bloody hell. Oh. My mouth's on fire now. Wow. What silly idiot I did wanted to enter his name for something like this where he doesn't even like heat. Oh. So <laughs> that was my experience sat right by you. <laughs> and uh, Joe, it was still burning about an hour later. I went through that milk pretty quick, I can tell you. <laughs> Need to, I think I need to get you to. Um, I think I need to get you to come on over for a wings evening with my brother and brother-in-law. We'll, we'll do some hot wings. How's that? Yeah, I've seen those videos. I don't <laughs> think so. It's <laughs> not that bad. Well, we'll, keep, we'll keep you on the good stuff. So. <laughs> keep you on the good stuff. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to get together soon for sure. Yeah, right, for let's sure. get back to a couple of questions because they sure. are mounting up. Oh, so this one's for me from Phil. Uh, do I grow chilies? Yes. Um, in fact, it was one of the reasons Sean and I um, first met and we did a chili grow off and um, we both grew um, pablanos, didn't we? And yeah, that, was like, was, that was like three years ago, man. Yeah, no, it's ages and ages ago. It's meant to and, and that's not that's not how we first met. We first met because I uh, I was uh, impressed with your videos and I commented on one of your videos saying uh, yes. that you must put a ton of work into your stuff. And yes, you um, it was on a video I think about uh, what are those? What's that um, that you use for your composting? 
you, you did a video and you actually sent me some roots from it. So oh, the comfrey. The comfrey, there you go. And that was that was when we first started chatting. That was ages ago. I think I had about a, I think I had about eight hundred subscribers at the time. So. <laughs> slightly Nothing moved world. on since then pal <laughs> a little bit yeah but yeah we did we did the poblana competition and you, and you beat me you beat me yeah and you've been running that competition since haven't you really you know yeah yeah well it's, it's expanded i mean the, that first year it was a uh, i mean we, we i've been doing it for about four or three or four years now and um this year man it, the winner of, of this year's competition for the largest chili, because I expanded it rather than the biggest poblano, because that was the competition, I expanded to the biggest chili. And um, the lady that won it was the same one that won it last year. And she came up with, and this is contestable, but it's basically bigger than the world record chili. And uh, according to Guinness World Records. But there's some, obviously, there's a, there's a few little issues there because Guinness seems to differentiate between what a bell pepper is and it thinks that that's not a chili, but it is part of the same family as what's well, exactly the same species as a jalapeno or a cayenne, right? So how do you differentiate what's chili? What's a, what's a bell pepper? Anyway, I mean, she did really well and, and the competition has done well that thankfully as your channel grows, you're able to, you're in a position where you can get better sponsorship. So there's some fantastic prizes this year. I'm really fortunate to, to have that happen, but like the first couple of years, I think it was some coupons to my store, which, you know, hopefully they appreciated. But at the same time, this year, the, both those prizes, I mean, there were two of them. And that they were each like 400 pounds worth of equipment. It was, yeah, yeah. it was very cool. It's amazing how things sort of progress as the channel grows. And this, is what and... this is what people don't understand. I mean, it's it's part of that. I mean, we talk about this quite a lot. You know, there's a commercial aspect of what we do. Um, it's not all about just you know, paying the bills, which it is a lot of the time. We have to pay the bills with some of the advertising we have to do on our channels. But there's also the benefits, right? I mean, the, the company that I got to provide me those um, prizes, basically I said I would do some advertising for them in in response. Hey, listen, can you provide me some prizes for this competition? So, you know, it's beneficial to all. And as long as we can keep doing that and obviously keep our channels going as well, then, you know, I don't really see the harm in that. And it's, it's difficult for people to understand that sometimes, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, without going too much into it, you know, I've done it here on, on this channel as well. I mean, we've given away greenhouses at, you know, they're, they're, they're £2,000 a time and it, we've given away a couple of those and, and stuff. I mean, apart from this and last Christmas, we, we did the Avent calendar for years, whereas every single day through December we were giving prizes away. That's what that that, that Avent calendar is what's giving you grey hairs, I think, Tony. I, well, mate, do you know what? The amount of work... That it took to, to run that calendar and to arrange everything for it. That's why I haven't done it for the last couple of years because I've been so busy with, you know, with everything else, you know. But um, but yeah, you know, it's you have to sort of constantly move forward. But as the channel grows and things, you're able to do more and more for people, you know. Yeah, so. and that's it. It's 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 a give and take. Um, yeah, let's not let's not go into that. We're going to a whole philosoph philosophical thing off off the back of this, but let's carry on with the chilies. Let's not go on to the old YouTube thing. So, Christy Groves is asking: Is there a really productive plant that you can recommend for a first time chili grower with a small space? Oh wow! This uh, so one that I recommend quite frequently is a ricotta. It's, it's a beautiful chili. It is very hardy, especially here in the UK. The only problem with the ricotta, or ricotta, I don't even know how they pronounce it. I, by the way, I, I get told up all the time. I know I say jalapeno wrong, apparently, according to the Americans, um, as well as cayenne and all that. But yeah, ricotta, it's a beautiful chili um, from the capsicum pubescence species of chilies. It's in the pubescence species, it has like little hairy uh, leaves and very unique flowers. A lot of the time they're purple flowers. Uh, the seeds of the chilies are black, a very unique plant, but they are hugely, hugely productive. Um, very juicy, sweet, but spicy chilies. The problem is that they take a long time to give you a harvest. So it's one of those, I think it's, I think it's about a hundred to 120 days where most chilies like on the capsicum anum or capsicum frutescence are around 60 days to 90 days maybe. These are on the upper end of that 100 to 120. So similar, if not longer than a lot of super hearts, which yeah. are notoriously long season. So that's a good good option. Um, but you can't go wrong with jalapeno. The, 
for example, the, the jalapeno hybrid that I'm selling on my website, um, you can get similar results from some of the others that are out there as well. So you don't have to go and get it from my website. Uh, the jalapeno early is a good one. In 60 days, you're going to start getting chilies and you'll constantly, as long as you keep picking them, keep feeding it right, don't overfeed it, don't overwater it, you're going to keep on harvesting some amazing chilies from it. And uh, yeah, that's always productive and so useful. You can do so many things with, with jalapenos, whether you pickle them, stuff them with cream cheese and wrap them with bacon, stick them on barbecue, my favorite. Um, yeah, pickle them, make it a hot sauce. You know, sriracha, when you, when you ripen jalapenos, a lot of people don't know, when you a ripe jalapeno is not green, it's red. Uh, but people oftentimes will use green jalapenos in, in what they're eating. Yep. But if you let it ripen to red, um, that's how sriracha is made. Sriracha uses ripe jalapenos. You've got a recipe book out as well, haven't you, with all of this? In yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's quite so, a lot of them um, there. Maybe um, uh, I'll get a link and I'll attach it as, um, uh, as one of the pinned comments. Um, yeah, for, it's, for a lot of work went into that. And I'm still proud of it. It was, again, you know... I, we always say we'll do things differently the next time around. I mean, you've written a few books and you have some amazing stuff. Guys, if you have not got it yet, get his compost masterclass because honestly, there is no other compost book that you'll ever need. It's so comprehensive. I don't know how you did it, mate. Uh, you must be cheating at life. I really don't get it. But <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I really I do not honestly understand how you put so much information. But anyway, the, the recipe book, it's got a bunch of recipes for hot sauces. Quite a few of them have accompanying videos as well. But there's a ton of other spicy recipes in there too for like meals, snacks, uh, jams, um there's chutneys in there there's also side dishes there's muffins and there's a lot of different things in there and people are always surprised when they buy it because they assume it's just a pamphlet right and they assume you know i'm just a youtuber trying to trying to cash out but that's not it at all i mean i put a lot of effort into that and some some good recipes and i'm sure you'll enjoy it so go check it out if, uh, if cool. you can I know it's i'll grab a link off and i'll put it as a pinned comment in, yeah, in sure. this so the folks can come back to it while we're on the subject of books guys um I just want to let you all know that the second book will be out probably around about March or April time and it's called Your First Vegetable Garden and uh, that'll be available uh, for you guys and it's been designed to walk through a complete year um, and starting from scratch so from basically rough ground right the way through to harvesting and storing uh, your veg and getting ready for the following year so that's something that i think will be uh good for those people who are new going to be new into coming into gardening and things like that so hopefully that'll be available march april of this year and i'm just finishing up the third book which will come out in 2024 so that's um that's all good um so we had a question off eric knight um yep which was, uh, I hybridize peppers by hand. I find that many vendors sell hybrids that uh, no on really hybridized, but they rather selected out what the bees have made. Do you hand pollinate it? Uh, hand pollinate, seriously, it's not a dig. Yeah, of course. For my hybrids, of course. I have a whole video. I'll show exactly how I do it. I, I don't hide anything, you know, even with my hot sauces. I run this as a business. This is you know, I quit my I quit my career last year to do this full time, the YouTube thing, as well as my hot sources and everything else, uh, CDO and that sort of thing. Um, I don't have to share my process, but I do. And if you have a look on my site, you'll be able to see exactly. I mean, I'm busy working on a hybrid at the moment, which actually I started in that video that I show, showing you exactly how to hand pollinate. Um, and, I, and I go through it quite extensively. There's lots of really cool macro close ups in that. I enjoyed that video. But yeah, I absolutely do it that way. There's there's too many vendors. Some of the big guys, and and uh, you don't need to subscribe to my channel for this. But keep an eye out. There's a very interesting video coming out with a hugely influential chili grower, and uh, we talk about some of the other influential chili growers that maybe do things a little differently. Um, that aren't the right way to do things. And yeah, there's a lot of people out there that claim they've got a hybrid by just like rubbing a few flowers together and saying, hey, there we go, I've got a new mix. That's not how it works. It takes generations, doesn't it? And this to, it to takes generations, but also, seed. how do you know what you're getting, right? I mean, if yeah. you haven't isolated, if you haven't removed the, you know, if you haven't removed the possibility of pollen getting in and, you know, German uh, pollinating that, you know, the, the, the receiving plant, 
then how do you know that it's actually a new variety? You don't. You're just taking a guess. You're hoping that, hey, well, this, this chili looks interesting. Let's just do that, right? So a lot yeah. of open pollination happening and things like that. Every one of my hybrids are completely isolated. Uh, I will not sell a hybrid that I have. Uh, I'll make it clear if it is a hybrid, but I won't sell a hybrid that isn't at seventh generation, which means it's stable. So, yeah, it, it's a weird industry. And, I, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, you would know more about this. I mean, you're into tomatoes, aren't you? Tony? Yeah, yeah. So you'd know. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not unique to the chili growing world. No, it's not. I'm sure, that it's pretty much with all the fruit species on. of of um, you know that you get. You know, tomatoes, cucumbers, chilies. They're all pretty much the same when uh, when you want to sort of hybridize them. You you you've that's got the same to do it for a number of years. It's not something that's that happens over. But, it's but the same I'm, thing with the I mean mango is, species. Well, I oh, man, I, I I battle with that. I've got some weird crossing open crossing happening with my um gem squashes that i that i grow but you know i'm talking more about the the politics side of it you know there's, there's a lot of people i know i mean i haven't been following the, the tomato community very closely for a while i did back in the day because there's a lot more information on tomatoes than there was on chilies yeah um the same thing with <laughs> with grow lights there was nothing there's no information out there 10 years ago about grow lights unless you were a weed grower right so yeah. most of my information that i got about grow lights was from that area that community when it comes to crossing tomatoes have been uh, a massive community there's been a massive community around tomatoes for much longer than there has been for chilies and they are far more mature in what they're doing. And the thing is, yeah, you're right. The, the hybridization and that sort of thing, it's, it's the same process as you follow now with chilies. But I'm guessing that in that same situation, there's a lot of people in the community or seed sellers that aren't as forthcoming or as honest as they should yeah. be when it comes scam to the artists. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. I'm, trying to, be, I'm trying to be diplomatic. No, I, yeah. I'm not all about being prim and proper, right? They scam artists and all they're out to do is make a quick buck. And that's not right because what that does, it gives someone who's just come into the gardening industry or the gardening uh, niche, if you like, uh, a bad experience and they quit. And that's one and that's thing what I we can't can avoid. Stand. It's just growing. It's such a rewarding hobby, no matter what you grow, whether it's chilies or what. I mean, chilies is obviously my thing, but you know, gardening as a whole, if you can just find something you're passionate about in the garden, it is such a rewarding hobby. It teaches you a bit of patience. Um, and the reward is just so rewarding, right? If yeah. you can get through a season, you get to that end. There's nothing better. Yeah. And I think a lot of the a lot of the world these days, it's all about instant gratification. And if you can, you know, the proudest, the things I'm most proud of with what I've done on my channel and what I've achieved is the fact that there are a few youngsters that have started growing chilies because of my channel. Exactly and like why Lisa awesome. is here now, you know, she's watching the, the live now. Um, I did a, a grow off with her uh, with a pumpkin and a couple of other things, you know, and she's 12 years old, I think 12 or 13. So, you know, it's brilliant. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. So let's move on. Uh, so sure. we've got Eva. Uh, I'm in South Wales. What's the best chili pepper for a beginning in my climate? Um, I'd go with short season chilies, especially if you don't have grow lights. Um, you know, if you start if you start chilies now, which is what I do around January, February time, um, because again I'm going for massive amounts of harvest. Um, if you're doing that, you need lights and things like that. And if you aren't willing to invest in that, that's fine. I'd wait a little bit longer. Wait till about March, April when things start warming up, because the warmth is important as well as the light. It's not just the warmth, and um, yeah, I'd wait till about March and then choose a short season chili. So something that has 60 days. And there are a few out there that have 60 days. Uh, jalapenos are a good option there. KN as well. Very good option. So any of those short season peppers means that you can start them indoors, maybe above a radiator on a south facing wall uh, so that you've got some light coming through. And obviously have a humidity cover. And as you would for any other seeds, just make sure that you, you know, just treating them nicely and once they once they pop up then yeah you'll be ready in like the end of april or so to take them outside or put them in some some place where they're going to get a lot more light if it's going to be behind the window that's fine as well just bear in mind there are uv coatings on a lot of windows and that can limit light it can drop it down by like 20 30 percent the amount of light that actually gets through but yeah just short season chilies um 
jalapeno. I mean, it's I know it sounds boring, but it's a tasty chili, so go for it. Shortcake is asking, uh, so to grow jalapeno plant inside a home, does it require a heated room? Doesn't mean doesn't need a heated room. It's not it's not like it's not it's not like it's a uh you know, 20 degrees Celsius is going to be fine, which most homes are, unless you're like us, where we were too scared to turn on our heating because, you know, you're actually watching the money throw out the window. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you want about 20 degrees Celsius and then you're fine. So most homes should be at around that. For super hots, they are a bit more touchy with this stuff. So like for germination, a super hot, you'll want to get it up to 28 degrees just for germination. Um, you get the best harvest you can if you can average around 20, 23 degrees Celsius um obviously a little bit warmer would be better but that's quite difficult to do in the uk but if you can get it above 20 degrees celsius keep the soil at that sort of temperature and have a decent amount of light then yeah you should be just fine but you don't need to heat it up ridiculously 30 degrees is probably too warm if you have that constantly uh you want the nighttime temperatures that's why in the greenhouse i don't warm it you know as soon as spring comes along i don't warm my greenhouse at all in the evenings even though it will drop down sometimes to 12 14 degrees celsius that's not a problem. As long as the average averages out to around about 20 degrees Celsius, that's perfectly fine. And I keep track of that, obviously, with things like my IoT system. Yeah. But, yeah, during the day, you're going to get 40 degrees Celsius in the greenhouse. Easy, right? That's I mean, even in early spring. Yes, and that'll absolutely. offset the colder temperatures at night. Cool. So Rob's asking if you ever use Canna. Canna? Uh, well, I mean, what are we talking about exactly? Uh, talking... I'm assuming he's talking about the... Um... Either their nutrients or their soils. Well, something like, so we're not talking about. So I use kind of the, the, um, the expanded clay, clay balls. Yeah, I use that when I do hydroponics. Um, I find that the the best way for chilies. Chilies like to have air getting to their roots, and I find that those allow that. So if you're doing like my favorite way of doing hydroponics with chilies is ebb and flood, because you can flood it. The roots are getting what they need. It absorbs a little bit into the the balls and then when it drops out it pulls fresh air into the medium and the chilies absolutely love that they go crazy for it yeah so you do use it from that perspective but i don't use their nutrients um i have some others that i use yeah do you use no, them, i use the canna clay ball and coir mix in the um six pot hydroponic system i used when i grew the habanero and uh, not the habanero sorry the poblano so yeah. um but I don't. Use you just got to be careful with things like like um, you know people go a bit overboard because they think water retention that's great means yeah. I need to water less, but chilies need a dry cycle in between watering, yeah. so that's a key tip. You want very good draining soil. So my soil mix is very much focused. Before I consider anything else, before I consider the nutrients, I consider how well it will drain, and uh, that's why you'll see the the ingredients that I have in there. It definitely means that it drains very easily um and yeah chilies if they if their roots are sitting in water they will not be happy no they, they, get don't. Green they don't leaves. they like their oxygen don't they? Um, well then people start assuming i mean we can get into this because i'm sure that people are interested in this you know the couple of common things you see wrong with chilies you know the the first one the most common one is green leaves like light green leaves where you don't have that lovely deep green and straight away people think oh it's nitrogen deficiency because it is nitrogen deficiency but that doesn't mean adding nitrogen is going to fix it. It means you probably are overwatering, right? Or that it's, the roots it's are sitting in water. It's an oxygen deficiency, really. Isn't it's an oxygen it, deficiency. It can't. It can't get in there. Or it's just the fact that you're, you know, you're just you're flushing out all the nitrogen by watering it too often. Or yeah, there's a lot of different reasons for it. Um, people think adding things is the answer. No, taking away is a much better answer. Or just stop. Just stop doing everything. It's the same thing with right. feed, isn't it? That's why you were mentioned earlier on, like half the half, strength. Yeah. And it's what I do with this lot and at the plot. I don't overfeed things. You're better to underfeed than overfeed something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So 100%. Grolsch is uh, asking you to heat a, a super hot right now. And I believe I've seen Grolsch on your channel, haven't I? So he's quite a regular. Grolsch, so. Grolsch loves seeing me in pain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grolsch, I don't have a chili on my table. I, I oh, what a shame. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> So, just not life. prepared at all <laughs> this is from my last live stream i've eaten it already so i'm not going to be eating it again but, yeah. yeah you won't see me eating one of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that was that's not pleasant that tasted awful and it was just like heat for the sake of heat 
Sorry, right. Grosh. Next time. Next time. 8th of, 8th of January, if people are interested, I will, I will make sure I get a super hot. There we are. Right. Don't crop me now. Uh, have you grown paprika chilies? And did you end up with a decent spice mix from them? Um, yeah, I have. But as far as I know, I mean, I'm going to look this up. But as far as I know, paprika is just smoked cayenne, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's a smoked, as far as I know, it's just smoked. But yeah, I mean, I'll make, I'll make a powder that I'll call uh, paprika. I'll, I'll make that from, basically, it's a, it's a bell pepper that's been dried out, right? I mean, that's typically, it's a sweet bell pepper and not cayenne. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do that sometimes, but it's just, it works out a lot cheaper just to buy, buy it. decent yeah, it, it's one of those things, you know, you have to weigh it up. I'd rather use my sweets to, my sweet peppers uh, or my bell peppers, that sort of thing. I will use those to bulk out some of my sauces. So instead of adding, like some people will just add water or they'll add fruit or something. I'd rather add something like a sweet chili and that'll bulk it out and you'll keep the lovely flavors there, but it also, it'll bring down the heat level just a little bit. So I prefer doing it that way. Okay, cool. Right. Uh do you ever make videos showing how to cross peppers by hand, which I think you've already answered? Yeah, the, I have. I've got a comprehensive one. Go have a look at my channel. Um, it's very in-depth, and it goes through the science of it as well. There's a few cool graphs in there that'll show you which varieties, which species can crop with which, uh, or can cross with which, uh, which readily crop, which, uh, cross, which ones are a massive problem. So, you know, in that video, I started a really challenging cross where I crossed the capsicum frutescence, my peri-peri, and I crossed that with a lemon drop, which, yeah, that, that was not easy. It's taken me a few years. I'm finally on to F3 of that cross. So I'm, I'm just fingers crossed because I didn't get a ton of uh, chilies off that plant. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get on to F4. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good video to go and watch. It gives you the fundamentals and it gives you a better understanding of how it works. And you'll you'll see it's not it's not a difficult process. Uh, it's something you have to be careful and meticulous and take some time doing it. Um, but it is worth it because it's yeah, when when you see something that you've created and it's got the qualities of the two plants, the, the parent plants, um, that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, cool. So Lisa was asking if we can cross pollinate to make a new type of chili. Yes, Lisa, we've already spoken about that, and yeah. it is what Sean was just alluding to. Um, uh, I'm helping with sowing plan for my community food garden. Chili's high on the list. Can you recommend two or three varieties that cover all basis? They have a large polytunnel. So cover all in terms of what? In terms of taste, I'm guessing. I mean, I'm it's a tough one. Because I grow chilies for heat. I the way I categorize, I normally have about five categories for how I grow chilies. One would be rarities, so ones that are really challenging. So one of the most challenging that I've never had success with is from the Galapagos Islands, called the Galapagoens, right? It's a completely separate species. And that thing could take up to 60 days to germinate, right? And I just do not have the patience for it, and I've never got it to be successful. Um, so I have some rarities. And then you can get, obviously, for taste, things like jalapeno, KN, um, what else is up your street that you enjoy? Uh, from the hot perspective, things like Scotch bonnets, habaneros, those are some classics. Uh, some other interesting ones out there, one that I love growing is the Heinen Yellow Lantern. Um, beautiful, beautiful chili. It's, uh, it's, it's from uh, China, from the Hainan region, and I make a hot sauce with that. It's a yellow chili. Uh, they're very prolific. They're, they were bred to be very prolific, so you get great harvest from them. And fairly early season, so it's about 100 days, 90 to 100 days before you stock in crops. And they've got a heat level of around about the habanero. <clears throat> um, so that, that's a good option. Um then from a just a pure taste perspective, like for me, like a real proper taste perspective, things like the pepper jus or the Malawian picant, you're not allowed to call it a pepper jus, but the Malawian picant is a beautiful, beautiful chili. It's one of my last source, well, sort of food videos that I did. I showed you how to make pepper juice, uh, pickled pepper juice, which is absolutely delicious. And they won't blow your head off. They've got a little bit of spice, but not too much, but they're very sweet and lovely tasting. Um, so those are good. And then obviously you want to have some sweet peppers. You want to have some sweet chilies growing because it's it's so nice to go out, especially for kids. If kids are starting to grow these for the first time, yes, they're going to get to the point where it's satisfying to grow these things and they see the beautiful plants and they see the lovely flowers that come through and then the chilies start coming through. 
But if they can go and pick one off the plant and actually just snack on it there without it burning the hell out of them, that's going to mean a lot as well. So things like sweet banana peppers, those are really cool. They look good. Uh, Red King Hybrid, just plain old bell pepper. I mean, that's the thing. If you go to a supermarket and you get a lovely, you know, big old bell pepper or Ramiro's, you can get those like long sweet peppers, uh, the Italian ones. Take some seeds from there and plant those. So you don't have to go buy seeds for those. But those are lovely to grow them out. Um, really tasty and it's satisfying, right? Cool. So Rob's asking if you cross pollinate, uh, can chilies cross pollinate on their own in the greenhouse? We should um, answer for that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they will. Uh, if there's insect, if there's insects around, then yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's the same as everything, isn't it? Uh, Patrick Meehan, um, do you grow Scotch bonnet? I do. Um, it's not a it's not a favorite of mine. I don't like the flavor very much. It's got a very unique flavor profile that I don't really like. I've been trying to create a sauce from it that I actually enjoy. But the West Indian style sauces, um, specifically in Kona, if you live in the UK, there's a sauce called in Kona. And they're, they're the base sauce. I just do not like it whatsoever. And I think I probably turned me off Scotch bonnets because it's, it's a very, very distinct Scotch bonnet taste in there. Yeah. So it's not a big favorite of mine. Okay. Teresa is asking, what are the drawbacks uh, in starting chilies too early and what, in your experience, is too early? <sighs> That's always the that's always the tough one, right? I mean, you just want to get started. You know, we, my my chilies, I'm, I still have to clean up my greenhouses. But as soon as you get to the end of your season, all you're doing is you think about the next season, right? I'm sure it's with most plants that you grow. You just want to get started as soon as possible. So a lot of people start a bit too soon here in the UK. They'll start early Jan, and what happens is they start getting a little bit of stress when it comes to March time, because now the plant is, what, it's almost 90 days old. The plant should be out in full sunlight. If if you're not able to do that and keep them warm, keep them, you know, above a decent temperature, then you're stuck. You're going to be you're going to be setting them back quite a bit. And that's a mistake I've made quite a bit because, again, I've been over keen. Um, and then you've got this challenge where, like, I've taken them outside, then I have to use a heater to keep things warm so that the frost doesn't come, but also to make sure that they keep on growing because as soon as you start stunting the growth, if it gets too cold and those roots like aren't very happy it could stop them growing for a week and that could yeah. set you back massively right yeah so yeah i would say when it comes to the majority of chilies if it's not a super hot then i'd say early feb is a good time to start them if you, if you have the space for it super hots middle of jan that's where i'm going to be starting them this year or even earlier some people are starting them first of jan or even middle of december i've seen some people because they're well keen to start getting harvest middle of the year. But you're going to come up with the same problem, right? And, yeah, it's all about balancing that out. So. Yeah, cool. So Pam Clark's asking, does my book or my second book cover chilies? It does, Pam, but um, in the second book, I talk about families of vegetables. Otherwise, the book would be like, you know, a mile thick, you know. It's, so we talk about things in families rather than individual sort of species you know but it, everything is covered within the book alan target whoops sorry wrong one phil i watched your video about io controllers and thermometer etc uh, are there any cheaper variants that you can recommend i need to monitor temperature and humidity remotely so i would recommend if you if you if you're somewhat technical you don't even have to be very technical if you if you're just willing to take a tr you know tr try something out then Go check out my second channel, Chili Chump 2. Uh, so it's youtube.com forward slash Chili Chump 2. I actually show you how to build your own. And, you know, what's lovely with what's happened in the last 10 years in the industry, microcontrollers have got so cheap and so capable. Um, I'm buying microcontrollers that have dual CPU. It has a decent amount of RAM on the thing. It's Wi-Fi enabled. And I'm buying that for about five bucks, six bucks. It's insane to me because the capabilities of that thing, I'm running cameras off them. I'm obviously doing sensors and that. So the devices that I'm using in my greenhouse, my the ones I built myself, I'm running off of those devices. So, you know, the sensors themselves, you can get a DHT11 or a DHT22. You can go and see, I've got links and all, all that stuff on my second channel. But those those devices, those, those sensors for, for, t for testing for humidity and temperature, 
about a pound, right, to buy them. It's not a lot. Uh, the most expensive part is probably the cases that you're going to want to put them in or the power supply that you're going to use. That's it, you know. So have a look at that. That's an option. Um, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of cheap. I mean, it takes a lot to get something to market, right? So even a cheap device that's going to be doing that is probably still going to cost you about 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, sod me coming to you. You need to come to me and automate my garden for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alan Target, Sean, do you post to Northern Ireland? I post globally. So uh, Northern Ireland would be pretty pretty easy. Um, I don't have anything go wrong there. Uh, sometimes Australia can be quite a challenge uh, from the seeds. So seeds that I send out, sources is not a problem because of the way I run my business. It's all done through proper channels. So sources get there. Uh, the only place that I've ever had a problem with my sources is Saudi, Saudi Arabia, because I use white wine vinegar in some of my sources and you're not allowed any alcohol content and stuff. I think it was Saudi. So that got sent back. But otherwise, yeah, I don't have a problem globally. Uh, seeds, seeds can be a bit of a challenge. It's just unfortunately the way the EU have mandated and also the UK have mandated um, the way that you sell seeds. So there can be some problems there sometimes, but I do ship globally as long as you're willing to take that risk. Um, and the risk is minimal. I'm sure there's some people in the chat that have bought seeds from me. Cool. So if they've had problems, I'm sure they'll tell you. Cool. Right. <laughs> I'm going to struggle with this one. Are you trying a game with Galapagos? This Galapagos. That's the one. <laughs> <sighs> there are such expensive seeds, and I, I will check. I'll, I, I haven't yet gone through all my seeds to check what I'm going to be growing this year. Um, that, that's something I'll be doing. I'm excited about that. I'm going to start kicking that off this weekend. I need to clear out my space so I can sit down and do it, uh, get, get through all my seeds. That's one of my favorite times of year, just choosing what I'm going to grow. Um, I need to check if I have any Galapagos uh, left over because – the last set that I had, they cost me like 25 bucks for five seeds. <laughs> and I was like, that's expensive, but it's, it's just I'm stubborn. I want to get this thing to grow. I, I will. If I have seeds for it, I will try one more time. Um, although I said that last year. I said, this is the last time. If it doesn't work this year, never doing it again. <laughs> yeah, but we don't like losing <laughs> don't like challenges, do no. we? You know? when, when something comes out the same, when something comes up in the garden, and, like, and for years, like – in this garden, it's not a problem, but in my old one, no one was able to grow collie there. And I don't know why it was, but it just they just wouldn't grow in this in the last garden. And then I come down here and I'm growing collie like like the weeds is mental. Um I'm having the problem this year and, and I actually had some great comments in a video where I was complaining about the fact that my cabbages I didn't do really well. Um and it, it just, it makes sense. I, I, unfortunately, I grow most things that I grow. I grow with the mentality of how I grow chilies, and that's not right. Um, you know, cabbages like a bit more of an alkaline soil, right? Now, when you're using fresh compost, which I was doing, that's not best, right? You want to have some crappy soil there, I think. So I think next year, hopefully, um, I, I've got some lime that I'll throw in there and help it out. But yeah, I had some comments telling me that they, they want a bit more of an alkaline soil, so... Hopefully I get that right this year because I love to uh, make me some sauerkraut and kimchi. So. Okay, cool. So I want to roll the next two questions into one if you can. Sure. Right. The first one is, do you top or prune chilies? And the second one is, would you start earlier in January if you top them? No. So, okay. Um, topping and pruning. I, I, I have a video on this again. I talk this through the subject completely so if you want like more comprehensive uh, discussion on this i do have that video but i don't find that it provides that much of a benefit with our short growing seasons if we ha if we could overwinter if i could do it cheaply where I, where i could afford to have heating in my large greenhouses over the winter time and keep my plants for a second season then topping and pruning absolutely first year i would keep that topped and pruned i would be shaping the hell out of the plants but the problem is topping and pruning for the large majority of the time, it sets back the plant too much. And with the shorter growing season, that's not very useful. Uh, this season's actually been quite a long season. I don't know if you've had the same experience, Tom, uh, Tony, but it's it's definitely been a, a much longer season. So I probably could have got away with doing a bit more of the topping at the beginning of the year. Um, but in a you never year, know, no. dear, well, that's the problem. You never know. If it gets to the end of the season and I'm still sitting there with the plant trying to put out fresh buds and stuff like that, you know, it's it's gone beyond. And that's the thing. It's all a balancing act, especially when you're doing things like a tropical plant, which a chili is. 
Um, in terms of if I was starting them earlier, would I top them and prune them? Uh, yes, if I was starting them much earlier, if I was starting them like in November and I didn't mind the amount, if I had the space for it and I had the decent amount of light and things like that, and I could afford the heating bill, then yeah, why not? I would probably top it and just keep it shaped so you get the roots growing. Because the whole point, my, my whole target, my whole focus until the plant starts putting out fruit is the root system. You've got to get that root system to fill the pot as much as you can. As soon as you've done that, that means it can take in more nutrients. It can take in water a lot easier. Uh, it's just going to be a lot healthier plant. But if you've got a small root system, yeah, you're screwed. Okay, cool. What's the mildest chili that you know of for someone who's uh, super sensitive? The mildest chili, uh, Antep Ahidoma. It's got to be one of my favorite chilies. Antep Ahidoma. Uh, it's A N T E P A C I or A J I, depending on where you're going. Uh, Dolma, D O L M A. I have, again, I have a checking out chilies episode that I did on that. It is such a delicious chili. It's got a little bit of a bite to it, but it's like a, it's like a big old bell pepper with some spice. And wow, what a what a chili! It's just it tastes like an apple. You're biting into that thing. It's, it's stunning. So yeah, I, I'd recommend that. Um, that's something I grow every year now since I started growing it because it's absolutely delicious. Um, I did see sorry, I did see a comment in the in the chat there. Uh, Graham Bolton saying, "Why not put solo in your greenhouse?" Solar, unfortunately, is not going to help when it comes to heating. You're just not going to get enough energy to be able to push heating back in, even lights as well. Uh, I did have a full solar system in my last greenhouse, but I used that just to run my pumps I and uh, fans. And That's it. it. But the heating, you think about it. I've got a small heater in here to keep me warm in this little office I'm in. Um, this is a 2.3 kilowatt heater. It's tiny. It's like this big. It would not even touch my greenhouse, right? It wouldn't do a thing in there, but that's 2,300 watts per hour that it's using. You would have to have a massive battery bank to be able to pump that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's just, unfortunately it's just not viable. It'd be great if it was, but cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's your thoughts on overwintering? As we've seen a lot of success with guys in southern hemisphere, and I'm in a similar temperature profile. If you can, if you don't have frost like we do, then go for it, right? The only reason I don't overwinter is, well, there's two reasons. Number one is I love growing from seed. But number two, I mean, I run a business. So if I could overwinter and do it in a way that was financially viable, then I would do it. But to keep your heaters running, like when we had this cold spell, it, mm -hmm. things were frozen solid for about a month, right? Yeah. Or three weeks. Running heating during that period of time would have probably cost me about 30 bucks a day. No, more than that. Probably 40, 50 bucks With a day to heat up the greenhouses. Yeah. So overwintering would have made no sense. If you don't have frost, if you don't have temperatures that go below about 3 degrees Celsius, then go for it. Overwinter, you'll get a much better harvest second year. Uh, with most plants, some plants actually don't do very well second year round. I find that the heat levels drop. Uh, it's a lovely big plant, but the heat levels drop. The flavors aren't as good. Um, but... Yeah, do it if, if if you don't get frost. If your temperatures stay above five, six degrees, then yeah, go for it. Just okay. reduce the amount of watering you do over winter. Yeah, so. cool. Last two questions then, all right? Uh, so don't put any more in the chat, guys, because these are the last two. <laughs> uh, Liz is asking, are either of you using biochar? No, uh, not... I haven't been using it. I've, I've thought about it. It's yeah, So I'm doing a bit of a series. I do it every year, actually. I do some comparisons between different types of compost, different sort of mix, nutrient mixes, things like that. Um, this year, I did it in a hydroponics mix. I mixed, uh, I, I did different mediums for hydroponics. A uh, year before, well, three years back, I think it was, I did a comparison between uh, bat guano and uh, vermicompost, because I love vermicomposting, worm compost. Mm -hmm. Um, biochar, it's not something I've played with yet, but I probably will if I can uh, figure out a an interesting video to make around that. So biochar and also including things like, um, what do you call that stuff? <coughs> um, I can't think of the I can't think of the word right now. Um, but basically, like the um, the mushroom. Uh, organisms oh, that like the male are um my, the, yeah my, 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 it's mycelium yeah that's it 
so i do use that in my soil mix but doing a comparison with and without you know because it obviously it's it does a great job for giving nutrients back but if i can do a comparison with those sort of things then maybe yeah, yeah. and i've used it um on and off for probably about 10 years but what yeah. i tend to do is do like big batches of it i'll dig that into my soil and um and then i won't bother because the thing is biochar is just carbon right so it's not going anywhere it's not really breaking down that much so once it's in your ground it's in your ground i mean the, the bacteria and the microbial life will break it down but um they tend to use it um you know for colonization so um that's so, for a fixed biome if, you, if yeah. you've got like you're doing it in soil like, which which i don't do i do it in pots because of just my right. process I, and i'll put it into the ground but like i said you know it's it's sporadic when i tend to use it as and when Last question then, Sean. Um, Vashimi is a beautiful variegated plant. Do you find that the variegation is inherited in the seedling sown from the plant? Does the verification hold true? Uh, depends. I mean, which 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 variety is that? Sorry, I can't it, see the question. Uh, CC Vashimi. That's all I've got. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, I don't know because that's this is the first year that again I make it clear. I mean, this is. It's not a hybrid. It was a genetic anomaly that I got that I saw the variegation on that. So it's the true chump fashimi that I have. Mm -hmm. So I grew the fashimi. I grew a few fashimi plants. This one started putting out some weird growth patterns early in the year. I did a couple of videos earlier on in the year calling it my monster plant because the leaves were all like half the leaf was a normal leaf and the rest of it was all crinkled up. It was very, very strange, very cool. Um, but then when it started growing, when it was green, there was some variegation on it. So I'm, I'm interested. I'm going to be growing them again this year. And hopefully it stays. It'd be awesome if it keeps the variegation and and even the leaves. I think the leaves looked awesome. So hopefully it keeps it. But like I mentioned in on my website, it's you know it's a, it's a bit of a, a crapshoot with that because um, again it's not one that I've I've stabilized over seven generations. Um, if I get it again this year with my isolated plants, uh, so well next year second generation then i'll be more likely to say to you yes it seems like it might be a trait that's going to be able to be stabilized so we'll see how that goes cool cool right sean um that's it for the questions and uh, for your part in the life um so take this time now just to sort of let everybody know where you are like i said all the links are below anyway but sort of to get them across to come and have a look at you yeah, just go, go check me out on YouTube. Um, if, you, if you're interested in anything to do with chilies or any of the geeky side of growing, uh, it doesn't have to be about chilies. It's, you know, I love all that sort of thing. Uh, if you're interested in cooking, again, just check out my channel, youtube.com forward slash chilichump, or go to my website. All my links are in there as well, chilichump.com. And you can spell it either way. I made sure I got both domains. So one L or two L's, <laughs> doesn't matter. Not just one L or two L's. <laughs> no. no. But it's been great right. spending some time with you today, Tony. Okay, mate. Brill, uh, stand by, mate, and I'll see you in a minute. Sure, sure. Right, guys, so um, that's it from Sean. Uh, obviously, I hope you've all had a good Christmas. I've just got uh, one thing I want to say to you now as uh, we close down, and here it comes. As we begin a new year, it's a great time to set goals and make a positive change in our lives. One way in which to do this is by starting a garden. Gardening has so many benefits. It's a great way to get exercise and connect with nature. Plus, it helps you save groceries as the impact of the cost of living crisis. But perhaps the most rewarding aspect of gardening is the sense of accomplishment aid that comes with nurturing and growing your own plants. There's something special about being able to say, I grew that. So, as we on this, let's make a commitment to get us outside and get our handy. Whether you have a backyard, a balcony, or just a windowsill, there's always a way to start a garden. Think about what you'd like to grow. Vegetables, herbs, flowers, or a combination of all three. Consider your space and what will work best for you. And don't be afraid.